One can say without any exaggeration that the Orthodox Church lives by the expectation of Easter and then by keeping it alive throughout the entire life. For us, Easter is not the commemoration of an event of the past. It is the very reality of our faith, of our certitude that Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tombs, bestowing life. In a recent CBS special broadcast for Easter at St. Vladimir's Orthodox Seminary, where he was dean since 1962, Father Alexander Schmemann articulated what was at the heart of his faith and the goal of his life. Father Schmemann died on December 13, 1983. This broadcast is a recollection of the man and a tribute to his memory. CBS presents For Our Times. Today, the spirit of St. Vladimir's. Here is CBS News correspondent Douglas Edwards. Father Alexander Schmemann was a friend of this broadcast and frequent participant. He was an articulate, scholarly, and personable witness for Orthodox Christianity and an effective contributor to the ecumenical movement, to East-West relations, and to the Christian-Jewish dialogue. He saw with a fresh perspective what was radically new in his ancient tradition and what was already stale and outmoded in much popular novelty. Father Schmemann was born in 1921 in Estonia, his parents Russian emigrants. He was raised and educated in France, became an Orthodox priest, and joined the faculty of St. Sergius Theological Institute there. In 1951, at the age of 30, he was invited to teach at St. Vladimir's Orthodox Seminary in New York. Ten years later, he was made dean of the seminary, and its renown grew along with his and the many lives he touched. In uncounted ways, he truly will remain the spirit of St. Vladimir's Seminary, where he provided more than 30 years of leadership. The commentary is by his friend and colleague at the seminary, Father Thomas Hopko. The human person and the human community are the living temple of God, in which God the Father, through his Son and his Spirit, comes to live and to dwell. Christ said that, uh, that those who love him, that he and his Father would come and make their home in them. If St. Vladimir Seminary is a vibrant spiritual community today, an internationally known center of orthodox theological studies, liturgical worship, and spiritual life, it is due in greatest part to the life and work of Father Alexander Schmemann. Father Schmemann came to America in 1951 with his wife and three small children. To join the faculty of St. Vladimir Seminary, which was then located in several apartments in New York City. He soon became the leader of the school and in 1962 was appointed dean, a position which he held until his death. Father Alexander had many remarkable gifts. He had a brilliant mind and was a brilliant speaker. He was known for his wit and his humor. But he also had the rare gift of a generous, loving heart not only as a pastor and spiritual father, but as a brother and a friend. Father Schmemann could compete with the best theological minds of the day as a religious thinker and a cultural critic, a fact enthusiastically attested to by such different people as Thomas Merton and Alexander Solzhenitsyn, the Russian writer who listened for many years to Father's radio broadcasts into the USSR. And yet Father delighted in being just one of the people, one of the priests, one of the members of the church, one of the community of believers, indeed, one of the human race.
Father once summed up his worldview in the simplest way. When I die, he said, you can write my in memoriam in one brief paragraph. You can say that my vision consisted in two no's, one yes, and eschatology. Two no's, one yes, and the kingdom of God. His first no was to secularism in all its forms, to any attempt to define man and the world without reference to God. His second no was to what Father often called religion. By this he meant religion as one part of life, one sacred compartment as opposed to all the rest considered as profane and worldly. It is this world. Christ did not come to bring religion, he would say. Christianity is not religion. Christ brought the kingdom of God, the righteousness, the peace, the joy in the Holy Spirit. And here we meet Father Alexander's yes. Yes to Christ and the church. Yes to Christ's church understood not as an institution or an organization, or an agency of any sort, however helpful and laudable its purposes. But yes to the church as the sacramental presence in this world of the eternal life of the world to come. Yes to the whole of God's creation, to all of life, as found and fulfilled in its God-given substance and purpose in Christ and in the church. This is known in all the earth. His Eminence Philip Saliba is Archbishop of the Antiochian Orthodox Christian Archdiocese in America. I don't know of any uh, modern Orthodox uh, theologian who has left uh, more impact on our uh, theological thoughts and uh, spiritual lives uh, in this country uh, more than uh, the late uh, uh, Father Alexander uh, Schmemann. Uh, he authored so many books. Uh, one of his uh, most brilliant uh, achievements, I would say, in the field of uh, theology uh, was his famous book for the life of the world. Uh, this book was uh, translated uh, into eight languages. And uh, uh, I would uh, honestly say that uh, the late uh, Father Schmemann uh, was the father of uh, Orthodox liturgical theology uh, in our church. Uh, his emphasis, for example, on the uh, on the Eucharist, on the liturgy, uh, as a joyful experience, as a trip, a journey to the uh, to the kingdom, uh, created a uh, a, uh, a tremendous liturgical renewal. Uh, in our uh, churches and, uh, and in our theological circles uh, all over the world. Uh, Father Schmemann was uh, completely devoted to the creation of a united Orthodox Church in America. Uh, Orthodoxy is united in uh, dogmas and doctrines and uh, holy tradition. But organically, unfortunately, we are still uh, divided into so many jurisdictions. Now, um, Father Schmemann was a tireless lecturer uh, in pan-Orthodox uh, circles. His uh, main theme was uh, Orthodox unity. Uh, he worked very closely with the SCOBA, the Standing Conference of uh, Orthodox Bishops in the Americas. Uh, he worked on many commissions of SCOBA. Uh, and he had this burning desire to see uh, orthodoxy in this country uh, united. And uh, when the Orthodox Church in America uh, 
in 1970 uh, obtain its autocephaly, its independence, from the Moscow Patriarchate. Uh, uh, I would say uh, uh, he was the happiest man on earth. Uh, but he continued to, to work very hard to, uh, to uh, convince all of us, especially the mother churches, uh, that orthodoxy uh, in North America is in a new land uh, it will have to develop its own personality it will have to develop its own school of theology its own school of uh, iconography uh, in other words it will have to acquire its own personality in this particular environment in this particular land Father Alexander's funeral was like a celebration of Easter. His body lay in the chapel which he loved, surrounded by hundreds of his students, many now bishops and priests, and hundreds of people who, whatever their age or relationship to Father, were all in a real way his spiritual children and his friends. The congregation celebrated the traditional Orthodox funeral vigil for a priest and the splendid Eucharistic liturgy. What Mrs. Schmemann in her letter to the community called the feast of fathers dying. The ancient funeral songs were sung asking God to receive his servant into his kingdom, to give him rest from his labors, to give him the joy of his presence and the fulfillment of his life's longing and desire. Professor Veselin Kesic, the senior member of the faculty, spoke on behalf of the seminary community. Father Alexander is known for his writing. And I would say in his writings there are two themes that permeate. It is theme of freedom and of joy. Not only in his writing, but in his own life. He was free man in Christ. He was man full of joy. And I would say his humor that Metropolitan Philip mentioned, it has its source in his freedom in Christ, in his joy of life, in his joy of being Christian. His humor, his stories, they always had a liberating effect. This afternoon I met some of his students and it was a real pleasure to listen to them, what they remember, the story that they recall, the story that they like to say. The, his humor, his story, and very often prophetic utterances liberated us from our narrow conclave and pushed through new barriers and led us into the freedom in which Christ made for us. In his most popular book, For the Life of the World, which has been translated into many languages, Father Schmemann spoke about death. Indeed, he spoke in an uncharacteristic manner for him about his own death in a very personal way. These are his words. The church is the entrance into the risen life of Christ. It is communion in life eternal, joy and peace in the Holy Spirit. It is the expectation of the day without evening of the kingdom, of the fulfillment of all things and all life in Christ. In Christ, death itself has become an act of life for he has filled it with himself, with his love and his light. 
And if I make this new life of Christ my own, mine this hunger and thirst for the kingdom, mine this expectation of Christ, mine the certitude that Christ is life, then my very death will be an act of communion with life. For neither life nor death can separate us from the love of Christ. I do not know when and how the fulfillment will come. I do not know when all things will be consummated in Christ. I know nothing about the whens and the hows. But I do know that in Christ, this great passage, the Pascha, the Passover of the world, has begun that the light of the world to come comes to us in the joy and peace of the Holy Spirit. For Christ is risen and life reigns. As part of a worldwide convocation held at St. Vladimir's Seminary in 1982, Father Schmemann and Metropolitan Theodosius focused on the problem of unifying the various Orthodox national churches. Why is it? that although everyone seems to desire unity of the Orthodox Church in America to replace all those, I don't know, 12 or how many ethnic jurisdictions, at the same time, uh, that unity uh, reaches a certain level, communications, cooperation, uh, good relations, but cannot go further into a kind of institutional expression of that unity. This is the problem as it was formulated and of course, uh, the real, uh, the real issue behind that is, and it was the object of a very heated debate, the ethnicism. Ethnicism. That means the idea that each jurisdiction, uh, each Orthodox Church in America, is first of all the continuation of a an ethnic national identity. These pains of of giving birth to a, a united Orthodox Church. Uh, you know, I would even add to this that, uh, that in a way, um, uh, the people on the other, on the other continent in Europe, uh, are hoping, you see, from America, uh, uh, something which which they feel has not happened in the old world, and that is through American orthodoxy may enter the 20th century, uh, not be l living in the old Byzantine structures in the structures of a Christian Orthodox world, which doesn't exist anymore. It's either communist or Islamic or totally secular. And this idea that the church can uh, uh, can use all its heritage, national, ethnic, and, and yet be one, and in one in a pluralistic world like America is, in other terms, which is really uh, has no Orthodox in its own heritage, is, is something very important. Archbishop Yakovos is the head of the Greek Orthodox Church in the Americas. I owe very much to the late Father Schmemann because of his vast knowledge of um, theology and his special field, the liturgical theology. He has been one of the most prolific writers and authors among the Orthodox theologians in this land. And he has um, left a, an indelible memory and name among theologians. Um, many of our priests had the opportunity and the privilege to sit at his classes. He lectured quite frequently in our own theological school, the Holy Cross Theological Seminary in Brookline. He was loved and uh, esteemed and respected. And because of all these sentiments, we shared with uh, other Orthodox Christians and non-Orthodox in this uh, country, I years ago bestowed upon him the office of the Archpriest of the Orthodox Church. And as recently as last October, we bestowed upon him another honor, that of the honor, uh, honorary degree of Doctor of Theology by uh, our own theological school. Father Schmemann was one of the ecumenical pioneers in our nation. He was very well known to all non-Orthodox theologians. And um, I bless the name of the Almighty for blessing us with his presence 
and his contributions and his services to both the Orthodox and non-Orthodox religious community. Father Schmemann's uh, life was a very rich one. It ended a little earlier than we thought, but uh, his books will continue to speak of him and for him to hundreds and thousands of uh, theological students in this land. The new chapel at St. Vladimir Seminary was dedicated at Easter time in 1983. The new chapel was the fulfillment of one of Father Alexander's dearest dreams. The church building, and particularly the altar, the table of the Eucharist, was the center of Father's life and of his thought. He insisted that it was the center of the seminary's life and work as well. He loved to quote the ancient saying in the Orthodox tradition, those who truly pray are theologians, and theologians are those who truly pray. Father Schmemann was a theologian of the liturgy. His last book, finished a few short weeks before he died, and now to be published by St. Vladimir Seminary Press with his many other books, the press being another of Father's favorite achievements, is entitled The Eucharist. According to Father Alexander, human beings are created for worship. They are created to lift their hearts and to give thanks to the Lord. When a person worships, gives thanks and praises God, then he lives and finds the meaning of life. But when he refuses to worship, he is in darkness, he is dead. Father's very last celebration of the Eucharist was on Thanksgiving Day. The word Eucharist in Greek means Thanksgiving. That day he wrote out his simple homily, which he very rarely did, and which proved to be his last. He began with these words, Everyone capable of thanksgiving is capable of salvation and eternal joy. And he ended with the words of the apostles on the Mount of Christ's Transfiguration. Lord, it is good for us to be here. An Orthodox Church building is consecrated like a human person is consecrated when he or she becomes a member of the church a living temple for God's dwelling. For God's temple is people, not building. So the building is treated like a person in the Orthodox rite. It is prepared and purified. It is washed and sanctified. We could even say that it is baptized like a person and confirmed, or in Orthodox language, chrismated. The building is baptized in the sense that it dies to being just a building and comes alive to be the dwelling place of God, the place of his glory and honor. And it is anointed with chrism, specially consecrated oil. The walls, the altar table, the sacred furniture and vessels, like a person with the seal of the gift of the Holy Spirit, to be indeed the dwelling of God in the spirit, the body of Christ, a spiritual temple. The altar is also vested in white robes, the robes of God's kingdom, the garments of salvation. Relics of saints are placed in the altar table to show that the church is people and is founded and built on those men, women, and children who were martyrs, witnesses to God in the world, bearers of his holiness, his righteousness, his peace, and his joy. His Beatitude Metropolitan Theodosius is the Archbishop of Washington, the presiding bishop of the Orthodox Church in America. I believe the greatest gift he has given us was opening our eyes to the liturgy and its implications in our daily life. We sometimes think of liturgy as something that happens in the church 
but he opened our eyes really to the deeper meaning of the liturgy and the Eucharist and uh, has given us an insight of translating it from uh, the church service into our Christian life and how the Eucharist is active in building up the body of Christ and our everyday Christian life. It is one of the, the areas that I believe that he will be remembered most. We see that this was also a gift of Father Alexander to, uh, uh, to bring, shall we say, theology to the people and, and to raise their consciousness, raise their, their spiritual, raise their theological level. And it was a beautiful, uh, you could word, beautiful synthesis of this, this whole thing of, of uh, bringing, shall we say, theology from uh, the business of theologians and, and professional church workers, but also to bring the people up and somehow to, to meet the, the two. And he had that great charisma. And so this, the seminary was able to, to grow and to progress. Uh, I was amazed and I remember about a year ago when we received a letter from the University of Athens, the theological faculty, uh, Reg granting recognition of the the high uh, theological standard and uh, speaking of us as a sister school. Uh, this was something that uh, even Father Alexander, when he looked at the paper, he said, uh, "Isn't you know we did not ask for this, we did not, but it comes thanks be to God." And it was, I think, a, a measure of his his own humility and also uh, that the humble, to say, beginnings of the seminary and it's flowering and we hope and pray that the spirit that he instilled in a lot of students who are now faculty members uh, priests bishops uh, church workers uh, will continue the growth of saint vladimir so that it will take its place with other theological schools here in this country The body of Father Schmemann is taken from the chapel at St. Vladimir Seminary. The choir is singing the final song of the Orthodox funeral service, which consists in just two words, memory eternal. This is a prayer asking God to remember his creature, for when God remembers, his creature lives. Father Alexander Schmemann will surely live in the eternal memory of God. And he will live in the minds and hearts of all who knew and loved him, for whom he was father, teacher, pastor, and friend. And he will surely live as well through his example and his words in many people who never saw his face or had the joy of his company when he lived upon the earth.